Mm -hmm. Instead of being, and when, it's, when spouses are concerned, instead of it being you becoming defensive about your spouse's point, mm -hmm. be sensitive to your spouse's perspective. Yes. Yolanda Jackson with Live in Peace Marriage Community. Y'all come on in. We have another great conversation today. How you doing today? I'm doing great, sweetheart. <laughs> doing great. Good, this good. Is a good day. It's a good day to talk about some great stuff. All right, all right. Okay. So what are we talking about today? I want to talk about under the title of self-care. I want to talk mm. about how we uh, can, how we take care of ourselves physically and spiritually. Okay. Okay. All right. And and my thought on this is, you know, I've talked to, I don't know if you've ever talked to someone who were in their hundreds, mm, you know, like a hundred, 90 plus. 100 two. Yeah. No, but our I, neighbors were 90. I, I've had, I've, I've had some relatives that I've talked to that were about 102 mm -hmm. and in right mind, no medication, talking well. And the amazing thing about seeing them is that they were in their right mind, having a great conversation, speaking about how they took care of themselves. Okay. And they're able to to be able to enjoy not only their children and grandchildren, but even their great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And I started thinking about that because it, it gave me more of a visual. Because every day you talk about taking care of yourself. And you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was thinking about that to say that I feel like if we put in practice, because it's hard for so many of us, to spiritually get ourselves together. Okay. To, to spiritually practice our Christian walks. For example, there's some days that somebody may cut you off in traffic. There's somebody that might say something to you at work that'll rub you the wrong way. And you might step out of your little Christian being and, <laughs> and say something to somebody that you know that Jesus would not like. Well, that's when people say, don't make me lose my religion. Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. What they say. And, and you know what? That's, that's a part of being human that the world has seeded into our flesh. And I, and I have to say that we've lived, I know for myself, mm -hmm. I've had 40 plus years of the world being baked into my flesh, keeping me one sided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think of the biggest challenge, do you agree that the biggest challenge we have is because we're so distracted? Uh, that's one thing. Yeah. And we lack discipline as a people. We do. We do. We, we lack, lack discipline. discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. like this. And you know what? That brings me to what we're talking about. You got, always got to have word to back what you talk about. Yes. Right? Yes. So, so what does the Bible say? So we're going to go into, and the word says in Second Timothy 1 and 7, it basically says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, mm. but of power, love, and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. Means you mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. You can do it. But you got to work on it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like what lifting weights. If you just keep lifting five pounds, mm -hmm. you're never going to get stronger. You know, uh, some translations say love, power, sound mind. Some translations say love, power, and self-control. Right, It's right. all the same, whether yes, it's self-control, yeah. sound mind, mm -hmm. or self-discipline. Okay. Right? Okay. And, it, and God gives us that. So yes. you said he did not give us fear. Right. But he gave us power, love, and he gave us the ability. Yes. So that means it's within us, mm -hmm. but we have to also pull it out. We have to pull it mm -hmm. out. And we have to practice it. We have yeah. to practice it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was speaking to my beautiful wife, and I was telling her that one of the things that, that helped me was that I learned how to discipline my flesh. Okay. okay. You started with your flesh first. I, I started with my okay. flesh first. Before my spirit, I, my spirit was getting stronger even when I didn't know it mm -hmm. because I was in God's word. Mm -hmm. But it, it actually allowed me to continue to make my flesh do what the spirit told it to do okay. by working out my, my flesh. Okay. And, and I'm going to give you an example. Some of us who, you know, sometimes it's hard to, when we go on diets. Yes. Oh, gosh. And that's the first thing, I think, where we, we set ourselves up for failure. We say we're going to go on a diet. And then after 30 days, we've done so well. We've lost the weight we want to lose. We get into some of the clothes we want to wear. Mm -hmm. And then we say, you know what? I've done well for 30-some days. <laughs> time to go ahead and eat that food I love so much. And then you fall off of working out. 
Yeah. So the practice doesn't is not a practice to do better. It's just a phase you go through. It's not sustainable. It's so not sustainable. sometimes we choose to do things that are not sustainable. Right. So today we want to talk to you about how to have self-discipline, mm -hmm. right? By caring for yourself mm -hmm. so that you can sustain it. Right. Right. So what helped you to sustain the discipline you have because you started with the flesh. Right. So what right. helped you with that? So I was at a point where I was at almost 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I know you remember me because mm -hmm. you couldn't see TV when I stood up. Uh, there was a lot of things that were happening okay. and I was <laughs> overweight. So, and, but then I got to a point where I went to a doctor's appointment and they told me that when I came back, I would have to be put on medication for certain things, diabetes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, my heart rate and all that. And I had children I wanted to grow up and witness and see. And remember I, my example earlier, it'd be great to be in my hundreds of sound minds, seeing my children and grandchildren flourish. Yes. And I can't do that the way I was going. So I started to discipline myself on what I ate. And instead of going on a diet, I started making lifestyle changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I just did it a little bit at a time. Just like you go in a weight room, you lift five pounds. Mm -hmm. And then after you get good with that, you start lifting 10 pounds. I didn't go in the weight room and start lifting 300 pounds the first day. Mm -hmm. You don't go into changing your eating habits by quitting everything all at once and just eating a head of lettuce. Yeah. You got to yeah. gotta work into it. So when I got into the practice of disciplining my body mm -hmm. to eating some of the things I just didn't want to eat because it didn't taste like the things I loved. I eventually got to the point where I started enjoying these foods that I didn't like at first yeah. because it was it was repetitive. Well, I remember you would implement one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So if it was portions, I know you started with reducing your portions. Yes. But at, regardless of what the actual practice was, you had to start with your mind. Yes. And yes. if God gives us the power, love, and a sound mind, he had to make sure his mind was focused on what God said he was going to give us, Amen. right? And that gave him the ability to know that I could sustain smaller portions because God gave me the power to do so. Amen. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's, that's what and I'm then saying. the practice of that is smaller portions, implementing maybe one food at a time that was healthier versus another one, right. et cetera. And yeah. that's how it starts. And that's how you eventually sustain it. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it's continued even to this day, because this has been what, eight years? Yeah. Eight, 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 eight nine well, years. Well, no, this is nine years. Nine year nine journey years. for yeah. you. Yeah. And with this being a nine year journey, the way you've been able to sustain the weight mm -hmm. is the sound mind. Right. Putting yourself first to make sure that uh, the self care is there mm -hmm. in your relationship with God. Right. 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 And then that that's where everything lies. That's where, that's where, lies. That's where it all happens, yes. right? So when the discipline for the physical came into play, then the discipline for the, the spiritual was stronger. Mm -hmm. In other words, when I walk okay. down the street and I hear someone say something to me that otherwise would have made me continue, uh, give back the negative. Yeah. Snap. I call yeah. that back. She but, calls okay. Whatever. <laughs> but, that, but I wanted to say what God wanted me to say mm -hmm. because I had disciplined myself. Since it was easy, it became easier for me to discipline my my physical. I began, it got easier for me to discipline my spirit. You know, mm -hmm. my spirit mm -hmm. got stronger. Helped me do that. Things didn't bother me if I got cut off in traffic. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead and have that lane. You can have that. Yeah. Somebody get in front of me at the grocery store. You know, go right ahead. You know, it, I'm on God's time. Right. You are on God's yeah. time. So, so when God gives us this ability to have self control. Mm -hmm to have whether it be self-control sound mind or self-discipline we're talking about those three things in this scripture here right. um so with this scripture telling us that he gave us power and love and he gave us the ability to do those things how do you bring it out when it's so challenging mm. and so he we've given you examples of how billy has done that and helped with that uh, particular part of it the next thing is we know that it starts with the mind, yes. right? So what's on your mind? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're working on, okay, not clapping back to your spouse, not trying to get the last word, mm -hmm. not trying to defend yourself all the time. Right, right. Uh, remember, I heard somebody say earlier today is that there is a gift. When you can give the person the gift of being understood, mm -hmm. that is such a blessing to them. That is so right. And it takes self-discipline to give them the gift to be understood, yes, right? That's yes, a gift. Yes. So how about maybe giving your spouse that gift today mm -hmm. of being understood? When in order to be understood, you have to be a good listener. So it, this came to me this morning, and I, mm -hmm. and I know you're going to like this. Mm -hmm. Instead of being, and when, it's, when spouses are concerned, instead of it being you becoming defensive about your spouse's point, mm -hmm. be sensitive to your spouse's perspective. 
Yes, yes. And okay. that's how you give an understanding. Yes. That's how you give that gift of understanding right, right. by respecting their perspective. That's right. And that helps you become a better listener. Yes. Right? And when you become a better listener, you basically have that self-control we're talking about today. Yeah. So put that into practice today and 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 know that okay, I want to give my gift this this gift of understanding mm -hmm. and I'm going to put into place what God said he already promised me. Power, love, sound mind, mm -hmm. right? Whether it be sound mind or self-discipline is already in you. Yes, so right. let God bring that out of you. Amen. Amen. That is our message for today. We hope that encouraged and inspired you. Catch us next week for another great conversation and understanding what does the Bible say about that Amen. and how we can apply it to our marriages today. Have a good one.